Cultic has been a game whose development I've been following for a little while now through the dev, Jason Smith's Twitter. What hooked me was the horror aesthetic and the crunchy, gruesome atmosphere and just how much it reminded me of Blood, which is easily one of my favorite shooters. Each Twitter update got me more and more excited to try it out, and finally, just as Realms Deep 2021 started up, the demo made a surprise drop on Steam, and I was there right away to download it. Needless to say, I absolutely loved it. Let's take a deeper dive into the demo and see what Cultic has to offer. In Cultic, you play as a yet unnamed character who, by the looks of it, seems to be an FBI agent or a detective who has gone on to investigate the disappearance of various people as well as to find out who's been behind a string of violent crime sprees. Only for you to die yourself. Soon you reawaken in a mass grave and your only choice is to move forward. One of the first things you'll notice is that the game is really crunchy and chunky looking, and I mean that in the best way possible. This is in part due to the color filtering settings. At the initial release of the demo, I found it to be pretty intrusive, making it harder to identify cultists at a distance, as well as making some of the environmental details hard to distinguish, so I disabled it. Giving the game a much more colorful, yet still eerie and dark atmosphere. As of a recent patch to the demo, the color filtering has been adjusted to make it much easier on the eyes, and spotting distant cultists is much easier, while still giving you that nice crunchy look and offering up a bit more color to the environments. I still prefer to play with the filtering off, however, as I still feel like it hinders visual clarity enough for me. The environments themselves are great looking. You start off in this rural jail in the middle of the night, you're crawling out of a pile of corpses and slowly working your way through the rocky forest roads and winding yourself up a hillside camp eventually deep into a cave system. Each area is just riddled with corpses and infested with cultists, the remnants of their takeover laying bare for the world to see. For instance, in this jailhouse, you can see what looks like a makeshift barricade made by the people inside, and unfortunately, it didn't work out too well. Everything is just so beautifully put together, and it's just gross and dingy and chunky and crunchy and I absolutely fucking love it. All of the first person animations look really cool and smooth and they're all sprites, all the cultists and the enemies look dingy and evil and gross and ah, it's just so fucking good. I really can't get over how much I love the visual style of this game, it's, it's, it's great. This whole level is beautifully crafted and it feels like some run-down rural area. It definitely hits those horror FPS aesthetics of games like Blood and Dusk and this is one of the greatest appeals of the game for me. It just looks so fucking good. Speaking of the cultists, Cultic offers up a nice variety in the demo, including a couple of surprises towards the end that I'll let you see for yourself. You've got the brown axe throwing cultists that, well, throw axes at you or swing at you at close range. Thrown axes can be shot out of the air or even kicked. The axes that they throw can actually be picked up and you can throw them yourself, but we'll get to weapons a little bit later. These guys are pretty common, fairly easy to dispatch, but they have a habit of kicking things. This can be anything on the ground from chairs to lanterns to jibs, and even the dynamite bundles that you throw, so be careful. Mamma mia! 
The Black Pistol Cultists are also numerous and one of the most dangerous enemies if you ignore them. They'll usually fire off a few rounds once you're in their line of sight and stop for a moment or two before letting off another volley. They're also usually placed far away from you and blend into the background a bit, so what you really need to do is look for those glowing red eyes. They also like to hide around corners quite a bit. These guys have been the cause of many of my deaths on the harder difficulties, so please do yourself a favor and take them out ASAP. The upgrade to these guys are the Sten Cultists. You'll know they're nearby by the rattling sounds they make from carrying all that ammo on their person, and these guys are no fucking joke, and thankfully not too common. Still, even in the heat of a firefight, as long as you're moving and strafing, they generally won't be able to hit you. Breaking line of sight for these guys and the pistol cultists is a great tactic to work against them, as once you're back in their sight, they need a moment before they can target you again, allowing you to dish out some death. Finally, have the red cultists. These guys are deadly at close range with their double barreled shotguns, and at a distance, they'll start chucking dynamite at you. On lower difficulties, it's just one stick, but on the harder difficulties, it's a full bundle of dynamite, and they are not conservative with their explosives. As long as you stick to mid-range and keep an eye on them and where they're throwing the TNT, they're not a huge issue. You can also shoot the dynamite out of the air, and if you're lucky enough or skilled enough, you can shoot them right as they toss them out. Each cultist is likely to drop a health pickup on death or ammo if they use a gun that fits their gun type. Sten and pistol cultists will drop handgun and stand ammo, red cultists will drop shotgun ammo, and brown cultists don't drop anything unless they're throwing it at you besides health. These pickups are much more generous on lower difficulties, but frequent enough on higher difficulties that I don't really feel like I was starving for health. There are items you can find, like the field kit, that will refill your health while you hold down the use key should you need it. The key to cultic though, and having enough supplies, is exploration. If you don't look around, you might find yourself strapped for ammo or health. This exploration doesn't necessarily mean secret hunting, although that does help quite a bit, but just keeping an eye out on the environment and checking little nooks and crannies will aid you significantly. But now let's get into the real meat here, the weapons. Currently there are six and currently there are six, and every weapon in Cultic is very powerful when used correctly. The axe, at first, seems weak and can take a lot of swings to kill even the brown cloaks. But you can hold down the attack button for a charged swing that deals a lot more damage. Alternatively, and my personal favorite way to use the axe, is throwing them. Once you get the hang of the arc, which isn't too bad, a headshot with the thrown axe is an insta-kill on all the cultists. This is really great for conserving ammo, and as long as you have one brown cloak alive, you can bait him into throwing the axes until you reach your max ammo. The pistol is decently accurate and great at mid-range. A bit harder to use at long range, but still useful. If you're going for headshots, you could put down even the meteor enemies with a number of well-placed hits. For those blood fans, we've got the TNT or dynamite bundles. This doesn't function like blood's dynamite, however, in that it doesn't explode on contact with enemies, so you'll need to cook it for a little while before you throw it. You can also throw the whole bundle, or you can remove the band from it and toss out a bunch of lit sticks to pepper an area with explosives. You can also toss it unlit and shoot it manually for a well-timed trap. The lever action rifle is an absolute beast. It's highly accurate and great at getting headshots. Perfect for long range, but still effective at close range if needed. The ammo is a bit scarce, probably because it's just so fucking powerful, but if you're secret hunting and exploring, you'll have more than enough ammo for it. The Sten is the workhorse weapon in my opinion. It can be used at almost any range and absolutely shreds through enemies up close and mid-range. It shares ammo with the pistol, but I've always had plenty of ammo throughout all of my playthroughs for it. The double barrel is devastating at close range, and you can either fire both barrels at once, or each individually. Sometimes though, it feels like you can be right next to a cultist, and even when you unload both barrels into them, they don't die. Other times, they just explode into a pulpy mess. But this could probably be due to the range I'm at though, 
and like with other weapons, headshots seem to help out immensely. Overall, it's a very powerful weapon, and there's actually a decent amount of ammo to be found for it. Finally, we've got the grenade launcher. This is an absolute powerhouse of a weapon. The grenade has a bit of an arc to it when you fire, so you'll need to account for that, but it's easily my go-to weapon for when there's a crowd of cultists all gathered together. This weapon is only found in secrets, so keep your eyes peeled for it. Each weapon feels so damn satisfying to use. The sound effects have a nice punch and you can really feel the impact as you mow down through the hordes of cultists. The feedback in general is just really great. The cultists will blow into little bits or their heads will blow off and you can see their brains and their eyes flying into a bloody and pulpy mess. There's also a mechanic that you can enable or disable that really hammers home this meaty, chunky feel to the combat, and that's the gore time. Some people not like this, and I'm not sure what the requirements are for gore time to happen, but when it does happen, it is so goddamn satisfying. The movement feels really solid, and you have a few options like dodging, which has no cooldown and allows you to go ridiculously fast, and sliding which is so fucking cool when you mix it in with the various combat scenarios. I'm not sure if either of these have iframes, but the dodge is very useful if you're in the thick of it and you need to move fast. I feel like there should be more of a visual cue to know that you've dodged and the distance you move is pretty short, but given that you can just spam it, I think it's alright for now, but it might need to be changed up in the future. You also, on a base level, just move pretty fast. I have always run enabled, so getting into the heat of combat, you can just zip and zoom and slide and dash and jump around the arena to your heart's content, and it just it just feels so good. It feels great. It's not like Viscera Fest levels of, God damn, this movement feels so good, but in its own right, it is really, really good. There's so many other things I think I could talk about that I absolutely love about this demo. All, all in all, this game just, it has me hooked, and I've put a lot more time into the demo than I have for some full release games that I own. So, what are you doing here? Just go fucking play the demo. It's on Steam right now. Uh, go follow Jason on Twitter uh, to keep up with the development. I'll leave a link in the description to it there. The 3D Realms Discord also has some channels dedicated to Cultic, so go check that out if you really like the demo. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that's it. Go play Cultic. Do it. It's fun. Go. Bye.